The console wars are upon us. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are looking at is Microsoft's latest effort to retake the throne within the gaming realm and be crowned the champ for this console generation. Of course, early on, game selection and exclusive titles tend to be pretty lackluster, but I am extremely excited, as I know a lot of you guys are, to finally have the next-gen consoles upon us. This is the Xbox Series X, and man, let me tell you, it packs tremendous power under the hood. We're talking about a 3.8 GHz AMD Zen 2 based processor, better on paper than the PS5's 3.5 GHz 8 core CPU. It also features a 12 teraflop AMD RDNA 2 GPU, 16 GB of GDDR RAM, and a 1 TB custom NVMe SSD for storage. It measures 11.9 by 5.9 by 5.9 inches and this chubby guy weighs in at 9.8 pounds enough to do some serious arm curls forget buying some dumbbells when you can be bougie and curl this $500 piece of hardware instead to most casual gamers and parents it may sound like I was speaking in tongues a second ago but let me put it simply for you all the series X undoubtedly is the console to get for those expecting the best screen resolution, the most power, and best specs available on any home console in late 2020. I am beyond excited to unbox it and start gaming on it as I feel this new console generation is what I personally needed to rejuvenate my inner gaming side. Trust me, I used to be a total gaming nerd and once upon a time was even an assistant manager at GameStop. Man, those were some fun times. But if you guys are pumped about the new Series X and PS5, regardless of which console you prefer, drop some hype in the comments below. Let's just be nice to each other because I know the comment section on YouTube is where humanity tends to have its most civilized discussions so grab a snack grab a drink and get ready as we go over a quick unboxing and take a closer look at the newest generation within the xbox gaming line what in the world are we waiting for let's do this so here it is many months and years of anticipation have come down to this precise moment I hope everyone who picks up a Series X feels like a 5 year old child on Christmas because this is exactly how I'm feeling now. We can see on the front we have Xbox branding along with a big image of our actual Series X with this very nice and futuristic looking pattern here for ventilation accompanied by some of our iconic green Xbox coloring to add a little pop into the system. We'll see this is a Series X and not a Series S by the branding on our bottom left corner and we also will see that this system is capable of outputting 4K at up to an insane 120 FPS. But honestly, natively it'll most likely be closer around 60 fps for most games and you'll also need a 4k tv to take advantage of such technology you can't use a 1080p tv and expect it to magically turn into 4k because of the xbox it just doesn't work that way we also see we have a full one terabyte of very fast internal ssd storage a whole 100 percent increase from when the xbox one launched about seven years ago with only a 500 gigabyte ssd more storage is always welcome in my opinion. If we turn the box around, we can see we have the Xbox Series X propped up looking like the most majestic refrigerator with black paint job and Microsoft branding I have ever seen in my entire life, alongside the new and revised controller. On the back, we see some more claims by Microsoft about this being the most powerful console available on the market, as well as some advertisements for the Xbox Game Pass that allows unlimited access to 100 plus high quality games. Think about it as a Netflix for Xbox games. In the background, we can also see Halo Infinite, which sadly was delayed until December 2020 and currently can only be pre-ordered. Over on the right hand side, we can see exactly what is found inside, including our Series X console, one wireless controller, an ultra high speed HDMI cable, and letting you know it's wireless networking capable, which in 2020 is a given. I don't know why they have it there, honestly. We can also see the power of the Series X with that 4K 120 FPS and up to an astonishing 8K high dynamic range. But again, you must have the necessary TV hardware in order to achieve such a resolution. All right, I think you guys are tired of looking at this box and are anxious to dig inside. So Microsoft does graciously offer some pull tabs 
eliminating the need for our unboxing knife. Kind of sad, my unboxing knives are seeing less and less action nowadays. But anyway, just tear those tabs off and lift open the lid to be welcomed by our Xbox Series X being protected with a ton of padding. But above it is a black box that houses our accessories and cords. So first, we have our ultra high speed HDMI cable that differs from the Series S in which this one is a notch better being much faster than the typical high speed cable. We then find our power cable that notably does not have a power brick attached. This is because our power brick isn't needed this time around, it's all internal a big plus for the Xbox Series X line. Digging deeper, we find our newly revised Xbox controller, and Microsoft graciously provides a set of AA batteries needed to power on the controller. This could be a pro or a con for some people. Some prefer using AA's, but in my opinion, I think an internal battery is preferable, like found on the DualShock controllers, but to each their own. I'll go over an in-depth review of the controller versus the Xbox One controller in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Following that, we get our standard warranty and information guide, as well as a quick start guide and how you can further get information on your new console by visiting the Xbox app in case you have any further questions. And finally, remove the thick foam padding protecting your actual console during shipment with the slogan, Power your dreams, a reference as to the power that Series X provides. Remove the black film shrouding your brand new device, and there it is folks, the all new Xbox Series X. As is customary, we have to take a closer look and take a tour of this brand new device. Think about me as a Microsoft tour guide as I showcase their latest, most powerful home console. So I think we should set aside the jokes first as this thing does slightly resemble a refrigerator, but I mean, let's be honest, this will fade away into your entertainment setup anyway. I remember all the memes when it was first announced. It was ridiculous. Twitter was blowing up. Unless you're constantly carrying around or moving your console, it'll likely stay put up for the entirety of the time you own it. From afar, this console looks like a big black box and I mean, you'd be correct. It's composed of this black matte material that picks up on the oils of your grimy, oily hands very easily. So in case you don't have a microfiber cloth nearby, you might want to head over to Amazon ASAP and order a few, because this console picks up on the oils of your hand really, really easily. Along the front of the console, you'll find an Xbox logo that also doubles as a physical power button and glows bright white when powered on. Directly flanking it to the south is our disc tray, accompanied by our eject button in the event you're tired of a certain game, you're ready to switch games super easily. It's pretty self-explanatory. Over to our lower left right corner, we feature a USB type A 3.1 port and our pairing button for all of your wireless controller pairing needs. Then over to the right hand side, in case you plan on laying your system horizontally, we do feature four small rubber feet here to stabilize the nine, almost 10 pound console. There's not much going on on the left hand side other than some Xbox branding and on the back is where we arrive to some pretty important stuff. Our array of I.O. and plenty of ventilation. Traditionally, Microsoft has given us a wide array of I.O. to accommodate different gamers varying needs. And on this iteration, we get a Kensington lock so your system doesn't magically walk away, a pair of USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports, a memory expansion slot, a gigabit ethernet port, an HDMI 2.1 port and of course your power port needed to power on such a powerful console. If you choose to lay your console vertically you'll notice there is a rather large concave vent across the top to secure an easy path for that hot air to blow out and has less ventilation than when the Xbox One debuted. Underneath the concave design you can kind of see the signature Xbox green underneath there which I think is a nice touch. It's hard to tell but if you can look close enough you'll be able to see that large fan which at times has more of a PC design rather than a home console. Just goes to show how meticulous Microsoft was when designing this thing to ensure heat was not an issue. I know some of you guys on Twitter have probably seen videos of Xbox Series X smoking and almost blowing up, but really, it's just some trolls blowing some smoke from their vapes onto the bottom of the system to make it look like the internals are being barbecued. The system is plenty capable of keeping the internals nice and cool with this pretty industrialized design. And on the bottom, we can see we have a circular plate elevating the Xbox slightly to allow for that ventilation to do its work. 
If you pay close attention, you'll also see their signature Hello from Seattle that Microsoft has put on their home consoles for a few generations now. We must go over the glaring problem we are currently facing in 2020 with all of this brand new technology that does sound super dope but hasn't yet been widely adopted. Similar to how 5G isn't fully here, the Xbox Series X is capable of some serious video output, but it might take a few years for the vast majority of gamers to take advantage. Let me explain. The Series X is rated to play 8K resolution in high dynamic range. Now ask yourself, do you have an 8K TV? I certainly don't, mainly because 8K TVs are currently running anywhere in the vicinity of a couple thousand bucks, all the way up to 10 grand for those QLED 85 inch 8K TVs. So for the time being, very few will be able to marvel in game with all those pixels and power. However, it's safe to say this is a good move by Microsoft since they are heavily future proofing their console so that eventually as these TVs do become cheaper more and more people will be able to take advantage of this tremendous power. In the meantime though 4K content is what most people will be capped at but even then the console plays 4K content exceptionally well. It drops zero frames. 4K 60fps is what I anticipate most games will give us for the next couple of years with a few exceptions cranking that up to 4k at 120 fps and all i can say is wow this console does not disappoint and now a burning question i know a lot of you guys are asking is how much improved is the controller the answer is it's not so different from the previous generation there are some slight improvements though that hands down make this more ergonomically comfortable and minor annoyances that I feel should have been corrected by now. My biggest complaint is the use of AA batteries and I know some people prefer AA's over a rechargeable battery. The main argument is that the lithium ion batteries found inside controllers like the DualShock eventually degrade over time and unless you know what you're doing it's not meant to be user upgradable or replaced. At least with double A's, your battery runs out and you go buy more. But if you're a heavy gamer and about to call in the highest score streak available to get gunned down because of some dead batteries, bro, that's tragic. Microsoft does have a solution with their plain charge kit which basically eliminates this problem, but it'll cost you. $24.99 to be exact for that rechargeable battery kit. At the end of the day, it comes down to preference and at least Microsoft gives gamers options. The controller is still that black matte design that will pick up on the oils of your hand just like the console does. The back of the arms, back of the front bumpers, and the trigger buttons have this textured grip to it that I know will come in handy during those intense situations where your hands become all sweaty and gross. Gamers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The arms also seem to have been curved in ever so slightly. It's such a minuscule difference, but once you have it in the hands, from muscle memory, you'll just feel the difference. You'll also notice our D-pad now is more reminiscent of the Elite controller sporting that hybrid D-pad that I guess technically can pass as its own joystick. Microsoft says this improvement aids with more accurate inputs from both cardinal directions and diagonals. We now also feature a dedicated share button like has been found on Sony's offering for some time now. Overall, I'm pleased with the new controller, but the previous controller was already one of the most comfortable controllers to game with, and now it's just even better. And it gets even cooler because in addition to those beautiful and juicy graphics and that tremendous potential under the hood, huge audio improvements were also made to round out the entire experience. With supported systems, the Series X now has 3D audio capabilities to drive in that super immersive experience. To do this, the console relies on the GPU and head related transfer function, or HRTF for short, to create the stunning ambience of truly unique and immersive sound. It also works with Dolby Atmos, virtual surround sound with headphones, DTSX, and Windows Sonic. And finally, the UI is as clean, sharp, and as fluid as ever, with everything you need right at your fingertips. Everything is very well organized, and you can find most things pretty easily, even for customers brand new to the Xbox experience. But because of a lackluster selection of exclusive titles for the time being, Microsoft is really pushing its Game Pass, and as of the recording of this video, allows you to try it out for just a dollar for the first month and then $14.99 after, and this does come bundled in with Xbox Live. That way you can download a wide array of fun titles and be able to play online with your buddies. There are titles from the original Xbox, the 360, and the Xbox One, so you're bound to find something you'll like. 
And if you're not too keen on streaming games, Microsoft backwards compatibility ambitions are on full display since you can play original Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One games. That's four whole generations of games that stretch back all the way to 2001. But it doesn't include every single title ever made. Microsoft has a handy comprehensive list of games the new console can play. It's about more than 500 games from the 360 collection and only about three dozen original Xbox games that are currently supported. So what are my thoughts on the Series X? I am absolutely in love and blown away at the potential this thing has. It is the most expensive offering coming in at $500, but I'm not going to dog it for not being able to perform at its best capabilities, simply because we just haven't reached that point yet. The wide adoption of 8K HDR TVs hasn't happened, and not all games can currently play at 4K 120 FPS. I'm more impressed that the power is hidden away, hibernating for now, but in a couple years time, I think the Series X will outperform the competition by a long shot in terms of performance and graphical abilities. For now, I'm quite content with the Series X and I'm excited for Halo to drop later this year, as well as the countless of other titles set to release in 2021. In a world stricken by this pesky virus, gaming is going to see a huge spike and I can already see both sides arguing as to which console is better. I have no preference, but I'm also equally as excited to unbox review and play test with the new PlayStation 5. Guys, drop your thoughts down below. Are you an Xbox gamer or do you despise Xbox and are 100% for team PlayStation? Try to be nice in the comments below now, all right? If you found this video useful or entertaining, consider dropping a fat like on this video as it helps my videos reach more eyes. That's been it for now, guys, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next unboxing video. Peace.